Welcome to a journey through the history of art. We will travel along a timeline from the caves to the 19th century. My name is Dr. Jean Willett. Let's begin by making the familiar unfamiliar. Watching the decimation of the forests of Europe in order that cathedrals built to the glory of God can rise. The superb art historian Michael Wood described the cultural sense of relief when, in the year 1000, the world had not come to an end. It is hard to believe that for a thousand years Christians had lived in expectation of the Second Coming. Indeed, it makes more historical sense to note that by that time a certain amount of stability had returned to Europe, thanks in part to an economic and social system called feudal that replaced the Roman Empire as a source of culture and order and Wood noted an expansion of building that resulted in a blanket of towering white cathedrals all across Europe. The cathedrals were a symbol of piety in a very spiritual society. After centuries of chaos, it was now safe to travel, and these cathedrals became the destination of pilgrims who would take long religious journeys to visit the relics of saints housed in these cathedrals. For an artisan, the long medieval period opened new opportunities and new crafts, not to mention all the trades connected to building these cathedrals. In a previous episode, I discussed the decades it took to build the pyramids. The cathedrals also provided steady employment, not for decades, but for centuries. The towns that grew up around the cathedrals housed all the services and workshops necessary to support these vast projects, including catering to the needs of the pilgrims. We can assume that now religion was a big business, much ephemera was produced by a variety of artisans, souvenirs, for example, that must have vanished over time. But the cathedrals have survived and are still sites of pilgrimage from the pious to the tourists. The period from 1000 to 1200 is called the Romanesque era, referring to the use of the Roman arch. The Romanesque cathedrals were characterized by their massive, heavy, fortress-like appearance. The interior and exterior designs were determined by the needs of the pilgrims. The basic design had been appropriated from the Roman Basilica and allowed for maximum circulation into the churches and around the nave aisle by the side aisles, funneling the pilgrims around the outer edges towards the relics. Art workers were not only in demand whether to design a container for a relic or for the actual building of the cathedral. Many skilled workers could travel among the building sites, finding new work, transmitting, and learning skills. Because religion was the main economic stimulus of the medieval era, cathedral towns were in competition with each other. Given that travel was hard, a major undertaking, a pilgrim had to be motivated by more than piety. The cathedral itself had to be worthy of the journey. Of course, the early architects called masons, were ambitious as well. What could be more spectacular than a feat of engineering? Given the weight of the stones used in construction and the primitive equipment, it would be the height of daring, so to speak, to erect the tallest cathedral. Of the medieval cathedrals, it might be said, if you build it, they will come. <laughs> <laughs>